Chapter 19 Designing CX Teams Every role at our company should have a customer-centric mindset, but not all ideas should end up as experiments or PSE. Additionally, not every job shapes customer-centric strategies or initiatives. Not every job is responsible for executing the research, insights, and data that drive strategies and initiatives. Not every job is responsible for information architecture, interaction design, service design, prototyping, and testing our concepts. These and other specialized roles will form your CX department. They strategize, plan, and execute user-centered design. Note that all CX roles should be problem finders and solvers, not order takers. CX staff are internal consultants going beyond CX tasks to also give advice, suggestions, direction, and reasoning. CX practitioners and leaders will likely challenge the status quo, ask critical thinking questions, and raise red flags when they see a troubling process, decision, or outcome. We should welcome this, but many companies would rather suppress this spirit and require CX staff to do what they are told, be quiet, and give stakeholders what they want. The CX department needs autonomy, an equal voice, and support, especially where they have an alternative perspective or want to discuss risks. To build a strong CX department running strong CX programs and initiatives, we must hire well-qualified CX professionals and empower them to create change. It's a simple formula. Hire specialists, allow them to research processes and experiences, and give them the authority to make improvements internally for our business as well as externally for customers. McKinsey published a report in April 2022 called Redesigning the Design Department. Weblink, cxcc.to slash A143. Key points include, one, businesses allowing designers to regularly improve internal business processes are more likely to have better commercial and financial performance. This is a reminder that when understood and correctly utilized, CX staff are internal consultants. They improve experiences and journeys for potential and current customers, as well as for internal teams. 2. A quote from an executive. Quote, We used to tell the designers what to do, now they're showing us what is possible, and it's so much better. End quote. This highlights CX's roles as problem finders and solvers, not order takers. 3. Welcome entry-level designers into environments that are organized to support and coach them. This sounds obvious, but it's a huge problem that will be discussed later in this chapter. 4. Challenges coming from designers are unlikely to be taken seriously unless we give design an equal position to other roles. Empower CX practitioners to do their best work and have an equal voice. End of list. One downside to McKinsey's report is that it had a quote recommending democratization, saying that we don't want diva designers. Democratization was thoroughly questioned, if not debunked, in this book's Common Research Mistakes chapter. Divas is a negatively framed term for a highly qualified specialist, someone we would want to hire. Many job descriptions ask for rock stars and ninjas. It's manipulative to try to make readers associate designers with divas so that people will think, yeah, we don't want any of those diva designers. If your company doesn't want divas in any role, make sure your candidate interviews check for low ego. McKinsey's findings sound exciting, but how do we follow through and design the right CX organization? CX in the org.
Should CX be under product because CX and UX are tied to our PSE? How about under engineering because there's a tight relationship between coding and our PSE designs? How about under brand since the customer experience is the brand experience? Maybe under marketing, customer support, or sales? Perhaps we want service designers working under corporate strategists, operations, or digital transformation? CX potentially fitting everywhere in the organization signals that it should be autonomous. Placing it organizationally under any of these domains often leads to heavy influence from that domain's priorities. For example, Engineering might value speed more than taking the time to ensure high solution quality. Marketing might value aesthetics more than usability. Product management might be under pressure to make stakeholders happy, even if those initiatives are customer peripheric. CX is closely partnered with many departments, showing how it doesn't belong to or under one. Google what a CXO, Chief Experience Officer, does, and it's all over the place, from being in charge of call centers to you will speak to customers and make a customer journey map. It's clear that this role has not yet been standardized. As a C-level executive, this person is not doing individual contributor work. They are not running research, designing screens, creating service blueprints, or talking to customers. They are many levels above that. The CXO is the key voice and shepherd of positive customer experiences and customer centricity in the organization. The organization under the CXO is focused on the end-to-end -end customer experience including all target, potential, and current customers' journeys, tasks, and perspectives. These teams deliver intelligence, maps, artifacts, documents, strategies, suggestions, concepts, and solutions that the other domains consume and utilize in their work. Given the breadth of work within CX and its far-reaching impact, I suggest the following. 1. Where there is no CXO, CX teams should have high-level leaders and executives and then report to a CPO, Chief Product Officer. This is an acceptable Plan B, but can skew the priorities and work of the CX department towards KPIs and business goals. Given McKinsey's indication that design staff can be great internal change agents, Having a CX department without a CXO answer up to an executive responsible for strategy, operations, or transformations might be interesting. I strongly recommend against placing CX organizationally beneath engineering or marketing as it can narrow CX's scope and autonomy. 2. Some companies are trying a centralized department that covers all of their research, business intelligence, and customer intelligence. This would put data, analytics, and those tracking competitors and the voice of the customer under the CX umbrella. In addition to service design and digital design, our CX department would include research, data, and modeling of all qualitative and quantitative types. 3. Eventually, we will want to grow the CX department to have its own branch in the organization with a CXO at the top. End of list. Individual Contributors ICs Individual contributors are staff at levels such as apprentice or intern, junior, mid-level, medior in parts of Europe, senior, and lead. Some companies have principal as a level above lead. Your company might use a different hierarchy. Individual contributors do the day-to-day -day work and usually have no direct reports, though in some countries, the lead practitioner is also a line manager. 
Some companies are tempted to hire individuals who have expert level skills across all CX tasks. For example, someone who is great at CX research, interaction design, and visual design. These so called unicorns or purple squirrels can be hard to find. The jobs that combine dozens of skills and tasks are a one way ticket to burnout city. Priorities are moving targets that change frequently, quality gets sacrificed, and there is ultimately no way for one person to do multiple simultaneous streams of work well. How will anybody get proper research done while under pressure to get us those screens? Where will corners be cut? And what are those risks? Those seeking to hybridize CX jobs are often unaware that the existing, specialized jobs are already hybridized. For example, there were separate information architect, interaction designer, and visual designer jobs 10 years ago. We now often expect all of these skills and proficiencies in one designer. Further combining jobs leads us into a territory of asking for an unreasonable combination of diverse and unrelated skills. Someone great at research is not necessarily great at interaction design. Someone great at information architecture is not necessarily a good visual designer. Additionally, unicorns, especially those with fewer than four years of experience, are unlikely to be experts yet in one CX subspecialty, let alone many or all of them. Since our customer-centric transformation requires us to focus on high-quality and high-value work, we will build our CX department from specialists. Note that all roles are expected to be strategic and all roles are expected to consider diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility at every step. The department includes 1. CX Researchers At larger companies, this is sometimes divided into two subspecialties, qualitative researchers and quantitative researchers. Qualitative research focuses on generative research, researching our target audience's behaviors and tasks, and evaluative research, testing concepts, designs, and prototypes. Quantitative research focuses on survey data, information from analytics tools, metrics we are tracking, and data from experiments. Common tasks across researchers include planning, recruiting, executing, analyzing, synthesizing, and reporting on research findings and insights providing evidence-based, actionable suggestions, advice, and direction, creating and updating maps and artifacts, including task analysis, optimized task flow, customer journey maps, personas or user definitions, and problem statements, collecting and analyzing the voice of the customer data, tasks related to card sorting, tree testing, and usability studies. Note. I'm seeing some agencies and consultancies calling this role a CX strategist or UX strategist. As all CX roles are strategic and present informed points of view and direction, it's hard to say which role should be called a strategist. 2. CX Architects This role uses research data to create and refine digital solutions matching customers' behaviors, needs, and tasks. If you don't have separate service designers, this role might also work on non-digital solutions. Common tasks include sitemaps, hierarchies, taxonomies, flows, if we don't have an optimized task flow, wireframes, and interactive prototypes, tasks related to information architecture and interaction design, Visual design skills should not be required or demanded as that specialty has a separate role. Note, some companies divide this role into two subspecialties, information architecture and interaction design. For example, I once met a full-time information architect at a retail chain. They focused on the taxonomy, 
categorization, and classification of the company's products so customers could easily find items in expected categories and subcategories. Some companies still have full-time specialized information architects or taxonomists. Note, this is the role a UX designer was before companies mistakenly thought that UX designers primarily work on visuals, brand, and colors. Depending upon the skills and tasks your company currently gives people called UX designer, product designer, experience designer, or UX UI designer, your current designer staff might match the CX architect or the CX visual designer role. 3. CX Service Designers This role also uses research data to create and refine solutions matching customers' behaviors, needs, and tasks. Service designers are also often researchers. Sometimes others have done the research and the service designer is more focused on strategic problem solving. Common tasks include CX Research Tasks plus CX Architect Tasks plus conceptualizing new and improved business and customer workflows. Service blueprints map the current state and desired future state of internal and external experiences. Service design also includes business design and business process improvements. 4. CX Visual Designers these specialists might be what we currently call our UI designers, brand designers, and at some company, product designers. Common tasks include working with color, typography, brand elements, mood, symbols and icons, spacing, illustrations, photographs, and anything improving the aesthetics of an interface. Visual designers are typically responsible for UI kits and design systems. Note, if your company has a design system or component library, you still need CX architects. Design systems are not anybody can plug and play. Architects design screens and interfaces deliberately based on customer intelligence, human behavior, and psychology knowledge. Having a design system does not replace these skills. 5. CX Content Designers Common tasks include strategizing and designing content, media, and text. They are often our writers. Content designers have their own research and testing they might do themselves or in partnership with researchers. Note. This role has sometimes been called a content strategist or UX writer. 6. CX Data Analysts The CX Data Analyst is an up-and-coming role. Common tasks include modeling customer behaviors, loss and demand models, data queries, metrics modeling, and creating dashboards. Note. Some companies combine the data analyst job with the quantitative researcher job. 7. Internal CX Consultants These change agents are higher-level practitioners who will help project teams be more customer-centric. They are internal customer-centricity consultants and coaches, helping individuals and teams shift from old ways of working to focusing on customer value creation and improved outcomes. We have agile coaches and product management coaches. We can have customer centricity coaches, which I'm calling the internal CX consultant. Common tasks include identifying teams needing help, analyzing and documenting their current state and ways of working, assessing collaboration, developing a change plan and initiatives, determining team or project KPIs or OKRs that help demonstrate improved customer centricity, and coaching the team through the plan and changes, identifying skills gaps and training opportunities, and providing that training if qualified, ensuring standardized ways of working across teams and PSE areas. Note, 
This can also be one or more outside consultants. If you don't create this role, service designers are a good second choice if they can make the time to coach internal teams through change. If you have internal CX consultants, they can partner with service designers to follow through on internal changes service designers have recommended. Note, the internal CX consultant is not teaching CX work to non-CX staff. End of list. For example, Salesforce is one company with a team devoted to this work. The following is from a 2022 job description for Human-Centered Change Lead, which appears to overlap our service designer and consultant roles. Quote, The Salesforce Professional Services Human-Centered Change Team is a group of hardworking consultants who create and complete change strategies enabling our customers to improve value from our Salesforce platform. We take a design-led and appreciative approach to creating achievable strategies to keep users at the heart of everything we do, turning human insights into business impact at Salesforce scale. We work across all industry verticals to help customers fuel the full power of Salesforce through a human-centric approach to organizational change. As part of professional services, our consultants have a strategic mindset, including understanding our customers' business objectives and the challenges they face in achieving the change required to truly transform. We partner with Salesforce colleagues across various engagements to enable a cross-functional team to ensure valuable customer outcomes. End quote. Here are some of the bullet points describing the lead level job. Quote, build and execute holistic change strategies for complex transformation initiatives and or have deep expertise in enablement strategies and management, education approaches, and project delivery. Integrate human-centered service design and the science of behavior change methods and enablement planning. Facilitate cross-functional partnerships to design and launch new ways of working. Manage the change team on customer engagements. Assist with pre-sales as needed. Drive cross-functional stakeholder alignment, engagement, and buy-in. Scale new practices focused on human-centered change. Conduct impact and barrier analyses, maturity level assessments via stakeholder interviews, and review existing processes to identify difficulties and gaps. Support detailed organizational change activities, including needs analysis, assessment of change readiness, communications, and guiding training teams to ensure an integrated approach. And engage closely with program management teams and key initiatives to ensure change leadership behavior modeling, change vision and narrative, change enablement activities, and change strategies are coordinated to delivery and execution. End of list. CX Leadership CX leaders must have executive sponsors and allies. Too many companies bring in CX or UX leadership, but nobody in the company believes in investing the time and budget required to do world-class work. Without executive sponsors and allies, CX leadership, and therefore the whole department, might be ineffective. Remember that beliefs like research and design aren't valuable or important, are self-fulfilling prophecies. If CX doesn't have enough budget, headcount, time, and resources, they might be stuck doing the least they can rush out. This work might not be valuable, which will accidentally feed the beliefs that caused it. As you build or rebuild your CX department, make sure it has at least one leader who is not an individual contributor. Consider matching layers of leadership to other departments and domains. For example, if you have vice presidents of product and engineering, 
make sure you hire at least one VP of CX. Like developers expect to be managed by someone with an impressive background as an engineering individual contributor, your CX individual contributors expect to be managed by someone who comes from the work. A certificate in CX or UX is not enough, especially since some of those are short courses with multiple choice exams. Look for years of experience in candidates' CX or UX specialties, preferably seven plus years for manager, director, and higher levels. Organizing CX or UX staff under management from other disciplines is common but is always a mismatch. ICs whose manager lacks CX experience and expertise can lead to a variety of process, morale, and culture problems, including 1. Managers who don't understand the work their staff is doing because they have never done that work. 2. If the individual contributors have a question about the best approach for something they're working on, their manager won't be able to help them. 3. The manager might superimpose their domain's priorities or processes on the individual contributor. 4. Managers who don't understand CX work might not budget for CX tools on the assumption that they're unimportant. Managers should support licensing tools that help CX staff be more efficient and collaborative. End of list. We very rarely see QA engineers directly reporting to product directors or portfolio managers. Where that might exist, are the QA engineers happy with their managers? Therefore, as you hire managers, directors, heads, and hire, it's essential to select candidates with years of CX or UX experience at the individual contributor level. Additionally, Individual contributors want to answer to managers who come from their particular specialty. Researchers should answer to someone with an extensive background in research. Architects should report to someone with an extensive background in information architecture, interaction design, or service design. There are often problems with an architect answering to a research manager who has little or no experience with architecture tasks. Moving up the ladder, there should be directors and heads who are specific to CX subspecialties. You might have a director of service design and a head of CX research. Eventually, specialized leadership will answer up to a higher level role bringing everything together. This might be your VP of CX or a Chief of CX. Some companies have a Chief of Design, but since design is often mistaken for aesthetics and branding, it's best to use CX where you mean CX. Figure 41. Screenshot from my online community. A researcher was in a panic because their company might hire a graphic designer as their skip manager. The researcher was concerned about this candidate's lack of research experience and asked the community to brainstorm interview questions that would determine if this person were well qualified or not. The message ends with all capital letters, I cannot have another graphic designer fake UX UI boss again. Please help. The researcher quit this job weeks later, despite their manager trying to convince them to stay. Management and hire shouldn't be individual contributors. Think about your VP of marketing, your director of engineering, or your head of product management. Are they doing day-to-day -day individual contributor tasks? Do you expect them to balance doing the work with being a manager, leader, strategist, planner, administrator, and operational change agent? In CX, we unfortunately see high-level individual contributor jobs given leadership titles as a carrot. Work here and you will get the fancy title of senior manager, head of, director, or VP. But 
two key hints show candidates that this is more of an individual contributor job than a strategic manager or leadership job. 1. Job descriptions say you will be hands-on or roll up your sleeves. Sometimes they say you don't mind getting your hands dirty and doing the day-to-day -day work. 2. The salary is nearly always at the senior or lead individual contributor level, not a manager, director, head, or VP level. End of list. We want CX leaders respected and not seen as worker bees with overinflated titles. Make sure that your layers of leadership and your individual contributors aren't an overlapping set. Combining an individual contributor job and a management job is an express train to over-unicorned burnout city. Create fair and humane jobs that don't combine multiple full-time jobs into one stressful role. These jobs often set people up to fail and compromise mental health. Figure 42. A Director of UXUI sounds like a high-level management job, but this job description screenshot shows that responsibilities include creating high-quality visual design and interactions of product ideas, creating wireframes, storyboards, user flows, journey mapping, process flows, interaction prototypes, and sitemaps, and conducting user research. Combining the researcher, architect, and visual designer jobs is ugly. But how will you have time to do three full-time jobs, coach and mentor a team of creative designers, participate in leadership meetings, continually develop best practices, and work with clients on site? This job seems impossible and sets someone up for failure. Project Team Composition Consider the speed and quality of our engineering work if each project were given to only one engineer. They would have to be geniuses with front-end, back-end, QA testing the code, and working with API calls, microservices, and DevOps. As much as you might hear that engineering should be T-shaped or decentralized, we still recognize engineering specialties and hire into them. We don't open a broad engineer job and tell candidates that what they're working on each day is unknown, so we'll need them to be good at everything. Consider staffing CX project teams the way you staff engineering teams. A larger team of well-qualified people gets more done in less time than a single person. You might like the idea of hybrids or generalists who can research and design, but it's slow and risky to have everything relying on one person and their health and availability. We must create a more efficient assembly line rather than waiting for one person to do the whole assembly line themselves. My updated Delta CX model of Five core CX staff per project is likely more of a goal than a currently attainable reality. But as we hire to reduce bottlenecks and keep growing the department, it can be part of our CX org's future vision. My suggestions are as follows. 1. CX architects work in pairs. Pair someone more junior with someone more senior. If this project is mission critical, pair two higher level, highly experienced practitioners. They share one seat with the Agile team. Now you have that design skill on the team as nearly every flavor of Agile suggests and you have competent and efficient specialists. If two CX architects are on the project team, one can do the work if the other is sick or on vacation. If one quits or is fired, the other has 100% knowledge of the project and can bring someone else up to speed. 2. 
CX researchers work in teams of three or more. Hire someone with five or more years of specialized research experience and team them up with two more junior researchers. This could be two more specialized qualitative researchers and one specialized quantitative researcher. CX leadership can adjust each project's team based on the required levels of expertise in particular specialties. Each research team is partnered with a CX architect pair. This prevents the common bottleneck of project teams or CX architects not having researchers available when they are needed. In this model, the researchers are fully allocated. Dedicated researchers help us get away from internal agency models, where we are waiting for someone from a centralized pool of researchers to be available to join our project. 3. The core team are your researchers and architects, since they are fully 100% allocated to their project or team. What I call the satellite team includes visual designers, content designers, and any other specialists that projects need but not on a full-time basis. As we shift toward utilizing design systems and component libraries more, we still need visual designers, but they often do not need to be 100% allocated for the full duration of the project. 4. Service designers' work is likely to span across multiple areas of our PSE and multiple departments of our company. They will work with product managers, product owners, agile and scrum teams, and others outside our digital departments. Depending on the project, service designers might not be specifically allocated to one PSE or Agile team. A service designer might be fully allocated to their current project, which might span multiple teams. 5. Internal CX consultants will be allocated to no more than two teams at a time to help them with change and transformation. Consultants' work and allocation are not connected to any particular project or PSE. Open Entry-Level Jobs There is a worldwide shortage of CX and UX talent at senior and higher levels, five-plus years of experience. Around 2017, employers decided they didn't want to train or support newbies, so they changed junior jobs to require a year or more of experience. Questions like, who will be our seniors in five years? And how will people get their first job if their first job doesn't want to be their first job? Went ignored as we mostly closed the door to people looking to start or transition into a CX or UX career. In 2022, many junior jobs require two or more years of experience, previously the requirement for mid-level jobs. Instead of fixing our problem, we are making it worse. It's also strange that we didn't want to train CX or UX newbies, but we have time and money to train product managers or the scrum team when they want to try their hands at CX and UX tasks. To set ourselves up for the future we want, we will have to open entry-level CX and UX jobs, knowing that these people need training, oversight, and support. They will be grateful for the chance. If your natural reaction to training entry-level workers is, they will take our training and then leave, you appear to know that your jobs and environment inspire workers to depart. Apprentices, interns, and juniors will be loyal and stay only if you create a great job in a positive environment. If you believe that entry-level workers will quit as soon as they feel decently trained, start investigating what it's like to work there so that you can make your culture and processes selling points, not weaknesses. Figure 43 Speaking of culture as a weakness, this is a screenshot of a startup's job description. 
One of the what you'll get from us bullet points is, quote, a not so cool team of depressed geniuses, end quote. Whether this was intended to be funny, honest, or both, it sounds like an opportunity to assess and improve the culture. Even startups should do something about not so cool teams. Utilize them correctly or lose them. It's quite common for CX and UX staff to be assigned to a project or team, but then be overruled, minimized, or treated as order takers. If a team doesn't want research as guiding evidence, or doesn't allow a designer to drive and make design decisions, why allocate that staff to a project that doesn't want them? You are probably short on CX staff. Assign them to project teams that understand what they do and will utilize them correctly. Some might say that a dysfunctional team like that is the team that needs CX the most and we should not remove practitioners. They suggest that CX staff continue to explain their jobs and the value of their work, which is where you hear that CX or UX must be evangelized. This sounds like an awful job and environment. Asking CX and UX to explain and evangelize their work, even though everybody working there before them evidently failed at this, is unreasonable. Let's get to the root cause of why so many people don't understand what CX or UX is, profession, processes, and people, and let's fix the root causes. If these teams' culture cannot be improved, at least let CX professionals walk away from these negative and sometimes abusive experiences. They will be happier on a team that welcomes what they bring to the project. Projects that value CX will benefit greatly by having additional staff and skills. Sidebar. Allocated where needed and respected. I heard about a company with a product director who was against research. They often declared that we can't learn anything from it and that it would be better to release the product and then learn what people want changed. The UX research team had planned a sizable generative study to inform the project's designs. The product director didn't want that either because they were sure their ideas were the way to go. There were product managers nearly begging for a researcher, their projects being slowed or derailed without one. Why execute a large research project for someone who predetermined that they won't use research evidence and data? If the insights are ignored, the research won't be a strong internal case study showing the value of generative research, which this company needed. The research manager wanted the large generative project to continue. This was a lot of time and money spent hoping that someone with a history of disregarding research data will utilize research data this time. They could have reassigned that researcher to people hungry for fresh evidence. End of sidebar. Hiring budget. When many departments at our company are fighting for budget, resources, and headcount, where do we get the budget to create or grow a CX department? If your company is new to CX or UX and you are considering your first hire, start with a team of two people. Budget for a lead level, often seven plus years of experience, researcher, and a separate lead architect. Start by dedicating them to one or two projects. Do not try to put them on every project at the company, especially since lovers of Agile expect these resources to be dedicated to a project or development team. The more projects they are on, the less time they will have to do projects well, the more priorities will be a moving target, and the more someone will believe that UX is slow and not agile. If your company already has a CX or UX team and is considering growing or redesigning it, 
Identify the bottlenecks. Companies rarely open the budget to hire 10, 20, or 60 people at once. Therefore, you should undertake an organizational design project in which you can identify the project teams who need additional CX headcount the most. These teams are easy to identify. They already recognize the need for CX specialists, or they have leaned on aspirologies because they don't have enough CX practitioners to get the work done. They use workshops, design by committee, or democratization because CX is a bottleneck. We should also be able to allocate some budget for hiring based on the money saved on the cost of poor quality. CX work will eventually sell itself. As you invest in CX processes and staff, and then tie those to business and customer outcomes and successes, making a case for the budget and expanding the team will be easier. Some of the hiring budget can come from the following. 1. Reduce workshops. This saves staff time and budget, but possibly also the cost of external facilitators and agencies. 2. Redirecting the budget currently used to fund non-CX roles trying CX tasks. This includes the internal and external costs of any mistakes or low-quality CX work the non-CX roles are producing. 3. Being a smarter shopper about outside corporate trainers and consultants. Some corporate trainers' day rates are what junior staff make in half a year. Money saved on selecting better trainers and consultants can be immediately reinvested into staffing. I am for training and professional development, but companies should be comparing multiple bids and working more closely with trainers to ensure that they deliver the right messages. End of list. Hiring the right people. Hiring the right people. If you ask for 10 CX or UX skills, but only check for pretty screens, you are not correctly assessing candidates. Additionally, not everybody claiming any particular skill is genuinely good at that skill. How to Hire the Right People is a book on its own. So in April 2021, I released a free 8-hour video course, Attracting and Retaining CX and UX Talent. Weblink, deltacx.link slash hr dash training. It's written for HR, recruiters, talent sourcers, and hiring managers. You can take the modules in any order you like, and you are not added to a mailing list. Start with one world-class research project. We don't have to change our entire organization overnight. Use your culture of experimentation. Try something new. Get feedback. Measure. Learn. Evolve. Iterate. Try an improved version and cycle through again. Here's how you might start. 1. Assign three well-qualified CX researchers to a generative observational research project, something that will answer questions and replace guesses with knowledge. 2. Give the research team eight weeks. That sounds scary and not agile, but try it anyway. It's four two-week sprints and a good compromise between the more thorough research and development companies used to do and the companies we respect still do, and the rushed or skimped research we do now. CX should not be held to agile standards for how long research or a research spike might take since CX processes and work are nothing like an engineering research spike. We want to see what world-class research work looks like. Our company might not have done this before, or not in a very long time. Let's give our coworkers the time, resources, budget, and trust they need. 3. Look and listen for surprises. Anything that might inspire teammates to reconsider what they thought they knew 
or throw away their assumptions. We might learn that customers' workflows and tasks look little like we imagined. Perhaps there are decision-making and collaborators we didn't consider. We might show that users didn't figure out the thing we assumed they would figure out. We might show that users got through the task but painfully or with mistakes. We will see where users met the four horsemen of bad CX, frustration, confusion, disappointment, and distraction. Where did users bump into dead ends, pop-ups and interruptions, and meaningless error messages? Did we see task dimensions, manually intensive, high cognitive load, error-prone, or knowledge-dependent? 4. With fresh and detailed information unlike what we typically have, watch how this changes the rest of the project. Follow the process suggested in the previous chapter and the next chapter. Define problems, create relevant maps, plan the work, and solve the problems. You'll then monitor that the problem is truly solved and watch your KPIs and OKRs. Also monitor and measure how our ways of working changed when we set up teams with knowledge and evidence. End of list. Trying real generative qualitative research done thoroughly by experts takes time and money, but it offers short and long-term benefits and evidence that our company won't have any other way. It will create more interest in and an appetite for research investment, especially early generative research that will inform strategies, initiatives, and PSE. We're laying people off. What about CX? Whether it's we grew too fast or economic concerns, sometimes a company can't avoid laying people off. Every department has reasons why they should be cut as little as possible. Consider risks, costs, and concerns, including 1. When utilized correctly, CX is critical to your customer and PSE strategies. CX is generating your most accurate and current customer intelligence. The more you cut them, especially their researchers, the more likely you will be more out of touch with your customers and their needs. 2. Workload and deadlines must be adjusted. If your CX team of 20 became a team of 10 due to layoffs, we should not expect 50% of the people to maintain the current workload. We will need to adjust timelines, roadmaps, and expectations so that we are not overworking and burning out the remaining staff. 3. Once the budget allows, try to bring back the staff you laid off. 2022 saw controversial layoffs where, weeks or months later, the company opened the jobs that had recently been cut rather than offering former workers their old jobs. This immediately undoes any of the reasons given publicly for the layoffs and makes it look like your company just wanted to remove current workers to try to pay new ones less. 4. Try to continue CX efforts. You might not yet have enough budget to rebuild a team you just laid off. If you cannot get CX budget or headcount, request a budget for temporary staff such as freelancers, contractors, or outside agencies or consultancies. 5. CX isn't KTLO. Keep the lights on. Strategizing and designing customer experiences and our PSE can't be a minimum viable effort where we are just keeping the lights on. All you have are your PSE and your customers. You can't afford to weaken your offering or alienate target audiences. 6. It's seed planting time. We must continually strategize what we are doing now and in the future, even during downsizing. We must understand our target customers and what is changing for them in these uncertain times. If we are not keeping our CX efforts strong, we will miss opportunities. Our rebound might take longer. End of list.